Liz Cambage is no stranger to controversies and messy exits from teams. Remember how she up and left the Tokyo playoffs, giving the Opals their first taste of defeat? Well, the Aussie player's done it again. Turns out the controversial basketball star is finally stepping away from the WNBA after leaving LA Sparks. But what really went down? Are the rumors of her abrupt quitting true? Let's find out. First off, what led to her decision to leave WNBA? When Liz abruptly left the Sparks last month, the team was half a game away from a playoff spot, with nine games to go. She quit the team, resulting in a contract divorce on July 26. She exited the locker room after her team's 84-66 loss to the Aces, her former squad. Her last words to the team were, I can't do this anymore. Best of luck to you guys. Yep, it was probably the worst timing to drop the bomb on your team. Now, the team's had a history of sudden team departures. The Sparks had signed her to a one-year deal ahead of the 2022 season, and she'd agreed to a deal below the league maximum. But the Australian national team member declined to return to the Tulsa Shock for the remainder of the WNBA season after the 2012 Olympics, saying she was physically exhausted. Although things got worse last month when she withdrew from the Tokyo Olympics less than two weeks before the game due to mental health issues. After playing 24 games with LA Sparks, she decided to leave the team too. The Sparks managing partner, Eric Holloman, said they support her decision to terminate her contract, and they've agreed to part ways amicably. Even after her departure, the team was excited about the core group and focused on a 2022 playoff berth. Also, the star posted something shocking recently. Turns out things were more serious than we'd imagined. Cambridge finally addressed her departure from Sparks in an Instagram post, where she confirmed she'll step away from the league for the time being. She also added that she hopes the WNBA will do its part in creating safer environments and a stronger support system for its players. Fans think this was a subtle hint to how the league did not support her with her mental health last season, and some even believe she was calling out the league for not doing better. Of course, the post also came with a long overdue apology to her Spark teammates, saying, I'm sorry to have left abruptly, and I wish it would have ended on a different note. Not the best apology out there, especially if you cost your team a big win at the Olympics. She did admit that she'd miss wearing the team's colors in a bittersweet way. So, why did she decide to end things with her former team? She averaged 13 points and 6.4 rebounds for the Sparks in 25 games the last season after signing as a free agent in the offseason. Her last words to her Sparks teammates were even more confusing. She told them less than a month before the end of the season, I can't do this anymore. Best of luck to you guys. But the 2018 WNBA peak performer wasn't someone who would quit for no reason. So if you've been dying to know why she's leaving, it looks like you'll have to wait a little longer. The four-time All-Star said that she'd be taking this time to focus on her healing and personal growth before giving any clarification on past rumors. It's unclear which rumor she's referring to. Are the allegations from former Opal's teammates about her racist abuse of the Nigerian team before last year's Olympics? Or does it have to do with the abrupt farewell to Sparks in the race for the playoffs last month? Well, we might have some theories. Recently, her criticism of her former Opal's team has led fans to believe her quitting WNBA had to do with the Australian team. If you kept up with Cambridge's controversy so far, you'd know she was called out by her own teammates for being racist to Nigerian players. And get this, the two-time WNBL champion told Nigerian players to go back to your third world country during a training game. Jeez, racism much? A News Corps report also claimed later she called them monkeys, but the player denied the allegations strongly. So how many of these rumors were true? Well, the former Opals captain, Jenna Ohay, confirmed the racist allegations. When asked about the Nigeria game, she confirmed that Cambage's comments triggered a brawl. That is all 100% correct, she replied. The two haven't spoken since the incident. Then, in November, Cambage got a formal reprimand by an independent panel, leading from a Basketball Australia investigation of the game. The panel found her guilty of one offense, but the other three were just rumors. The verdict? She did engage in racist conduct. Looks like there's no bouncing back from that. What's more, she's always blamed her quitting on poor mental health and unsupportive members. Yep, we might be seeing a pattern here. Days after the Nigerian game, she withdrew from the Aussie national team for the Tokyo Olympics, saying she's having panic attacks about heading into an Olympic COVID bubble. Aussie fans believe she'd gotten cold feet and found it hard to forgive her after she cost them the World Cup. Can you blame them? Opals have been used to winning, but with the Cambridge fiasco, the team lost eight of their final nine games. Talk about an embarrassing play. Now the pro's been pretty vocal about her mental health for a long time, sitting out six years before coming back and asking to be traded for Tulsa. After leaving Opals, she said that they'd never wanted her to be the best she can be. Clearly, she had zero interest in playing for the Olympics again. She even told ABC Spot she felt supported and protected by Sparks on a level the Opals never gave to her. So why leave Sparks in the U.S. Pro League if she feels at home there? Well, it's not a stretch to see the connection between her racist remarks on Nigeria and her exit from the Sparks. Two of her LA teammates are Nigerian and look to play with the Nigerian national team. We can all guess how that's going to work out. It's also worth noting that Cambridge hasn't played more than one consecutive season with any WNBA squad since she was drafted in 2011. Her tenure is as rocky 
rocky and unpredictable as the player herself, with stops in Dallas and LA. After leaving Sparks, Cambage knows she's a risk the teams are no longer willing to take, so might as well give up on her WNBA dreams for good. In other news, first off, Jackie Young was named the most improved player in WNBA awards. Yep, the WNBA playoffs are underway, but in addition to the on-court action, we also have the awards season in full swing. Among other big names, the Aces' Jackie Young was named the most improved player. Since her rookie season in 2019, she's improved steadily, and for the first time, she became an all-star this season. Yes, the player's performance has definitely made a leap. She averaged 15.9 points, 3.9 assists, 4.4 rebounds, and 1.4 steals per game. All these numbers prove her career's taking off. The biggest difference we saw was with her outside shooting, where she went from a reluctant shooter to one of the best in the league. Fans can't wait to see her progress in the years to come. Next, Brianna Stewart earns AP WNBA Player Player of the Year honors. The Seattle Storm forward has always been ambitious. Looks like her hard work has paid off. She led the league scoring for the first time in her career, averaging 21.8 points. On Tuesday, she became the first player to be the Associated Press WNBA Player of the Year for the second time. The 10-member media panel gave Stewart six votes, surpassing Aja Wilson's four votes. Stewart, who was also the 2019 Player of the Year, said it's an honor to be seen as the best in the league. She's constantly trying to get better to elevate her team and the entire league. And lastly, Ryan Howard took home the Rookie of the Year award. Yep, no suspense here. If anyone made a big debut in women's basketball this year, it has to be Ryan Howard. She was the number one overall pick for her terrific rookie season, averaging 6.2 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 2.8 assists. Not to mention, she secured 1.6 steals per game. Now, out of all the rookies, she was first in scoring, sixth in rebounding, first in assists, and first in steals. Howard also became just the eighth rookie in league history to average at least 16 points, four rebounds, two assists, and two stocks. Steals plus blocks. After all, it was largely due to Howard that the Atlanta Dream exceeded all expectations and nearly made the playoffs. If the player keeps improving, she's bound to surprise the crowd and lead her team to the championship. And that's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on Liz Cambage leaving the WNBA? Let us know in the comments below. Do give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell notification for similar videos. See you in the next one.